Hello guys and welcome back to Project Monaco. I know it's been a while, but Monaco is back, it's live and it's kicking and I cannot wait to show you the progress that we have made over the last couple of months. But before we move too much into this episode, let's have a recap of what we did last time. Now if you recall, we worked our green little fingers off in the previous episode and we got down the Japanese garden area in Monaco, right by the seafront. And boy, this was a very different type of episode for Monaco. We haven't really done anything like this so far. And that's what I loved about Monaco, the fact it has so many different types of areas. Each episode hopefully is gonna be a bit more unique than the last. And today is no exception. We're moving slightly away from the Japanese gardens to this beautiful structure. And it's a structure you can see quite easily from Google Maps and it's a huge construction. This is the Grimaldi Forum and this is a conference center that is located on the seafront of the Eastern Bay Quartet. And it's a fantastic model, it's so unique. It's really, really a special model and I've been lucky enough to have this created by an asset creator, which we'll go into a little bit later on. Now, because of the size of this uh, huge construction, I wanted to dedicate a whole episode to pretty much placing it down and detailing around it. We'll do a little bit of work around it as well with some buildings, but it's purely gonna be all about the Grimaldi Forum. And the reason for that is the detail level of the building itself as it comes is fantastic, it really is. And what I love about this as well is it's been left open for us to add our own detail in as well. You can see the green segments here, which you can add plants, or if you wanted to obviously play the game a little bit more vanilla, you can get away of leaving that as it is. But I suppose we should talk about who created this really, shouldn't we? So the creator is Chris Delisto, and you'll remember his name, I'm sure, from the workshop. He's done some beautiful malls, some fantastic churches, and outstanding buildings nonetheless. And if you have a look in the description below in this video, I've dropped a link to his workshops. You can have a look at some of the other models he's built and boy, there is gonna be one for you there that you like. I can guarantee that. They are outstanding level of detail and he's a very, very talented creator. But jumping back into the builds you can see on screen, the advantage of this building by Chris Listo is it's all on one level pan. So what we can do then is we can uh, use that as our sort of terrain height. The, you know, we know it's gonna be flat and we can just build up around it. You can see earlier I had a bit of trouble um, getting some of the uh, side parts of the uh, the water to, to match up to the walls because essentially the walls are a seawall, um, what we're building here. Um, so I'm trying to get the level of the terrain up as close as we possibly can to get it as realistic as possible. Now what we're working on here is the fountain and the fountain area is a very unique um, well, the water itself is very unique. The build itself is very unique. We're not gonna be able to copy it exactly um, because there's nothing on the workshop that suits the need for it. But what I did find is these water ponds, and I think these are the ones which have the carp in as well. So they still have the nice theme. They match nicely alongside the Japanese garden. So the actual flare and contrast between these two areas still works in my opinion. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not ideal. It's not exactly as you see it, but we do accommodate this using the um, procedure objects mod and the uh, walkways here to sort of imitate the look um, of this particular fountain area. And you can see on the screen, top left hand corner now, how close we get it. You know, it's not perfect, but you can see what it's trying to resemble. And that's all we're going for here in Monaco. As I've said before, many times, we're not gonna be getting things perfect it's near impossible with the complexities of the game, unless I was to try and learn how to model everything myself, which um, I certainly do not have the manpower for. Um, but yeah, that's how we are getting along with that. Now, another thing with Monaco is there's obviously a lot of this orange pavement down and I wanted to sort of break things up and work on a few techniques to allow us to, you know, make it not look as bulky in terms of the pure orange concrete etc um, and obviously one way that I've been doing it is to lighten the concrete itself by putting down some decals which um, works nicely but also some fillers and what I mean by fillers is putting some plants down as you can see we've started doing that over the opposite side of the um, Grimaldi um, and yeah just trying to break the 
break the paths up, I guess. And you know, if you're not, if you if you've got something that's constant all the time, it's going to look very heavy and in your face. So adding a few little things to break up the repetition um, really does help when it comes to making things firstly look more realistic, but secondly to make things look like they're more coming to life, which is the idea behind the whole build itself. The whole reason we play City Skylines is to create something wonderful and also having that realism in there does help. We're not building paintings here, we're building things that actually do things and you know, having the traffic and people walking around and especially when you're building these locations that should be bringing in tourists once you get people to come and you see people walking around it really does give you a massive buzz well i mean it does it does to me anyway um because it feels realistic you know you've got people walking around things and one of the great things about the uh the model that crystalisto done is the section by the glass front is actually walkable for pedestrians as well so the plan will be to put some sort of events generator there to allow people to walk on top of that section because that's kind of one of the main entrances in um, and eventually you know as we build up the area we can make things look more realistic and have a lot more people in the locations where they should be um, because at the moment because we're building very linearly um, and on the outskirts of Monaco at the moment we're not really building up and bringing in the people that we need so that's one thing we need to start working on a bit later on in the series is to try and bring up the population and you know making things look more vibrant and more busy which is the uh, a later stage which we'll probably do an episode on in itself because I think that'd be quite an enjoyable one to do and interesting to work out together. And whilst we are just placing down some of the uh, planters here I'm not sure if you've seen but on my social media I have teased out the new series yes we are going to be starting a new series and it's going to be a very different one to what we have done recently well maybe maybe not it depends on how you look at it but there is a few teaser pictures and you may have seen a few that i posted up through the youtube community as well but that is going very well at the moment we are about i'd say 80 percent done of the map itself um, it's the first time I've actually created a map myself, so um, don't expect anything too amazing. We're not, you know, we're not Mr. Miyagi or anything like that over here. Um, but he did actually give me a hand in building it in terms of some advice, and he did help out nicely with the theme as well. So did Mac Welshman as well. So a big shout out to those two guys. They're the ones that have really pushed me to start working on this new series. And I'm really excited actually. It's a series that um, I've wanted to do for a long time. I'm not going to tell you what or when yet. Um, there's no time scale in terms of when episode one will be up, but there will be a sort of a teaser coming out probably later next month. So keep an eye out for that. And I would love to hear in the comments section below what you think this new series is going to be about. Where's it going to be from? What's the location going to be? and um, we'll have a bit of fun and see who gets the closest to that. But back on camera, can I just say how beautiful those palm trees looked there in those clips. They are absolutely outstanding. I really do love the palm trees in this. Big shout out to all the tree makers out there because, you know, trees are not really considered a very exciting thing in real day life, but when you come to City Skylines, everyone loves a tree. Everyone loves a nice plant as well, and we have been blessed with the number we've already got in the workshop at the moment and we are still getting more and more releases on the weekly and Mr Mason certainly has released some very nice trees recently so make sure you check his um, workshop out as well. And this is going back to my comment earlier about trying to fill out the area so we're just trying to make this area look a little bit more realistic, a little bit more crowded. Um, and I've used this mulch, which works quite nicely to add the palm trees on top. It just makes it look a little bit more realistic. And uh, I just think it's a, a nice addition to have to just placing things down on grass because a tree's not gonna technically just pull itself out of grass. There's gonna be a little bit of dirt around it as it grows itself up.
Now going back to the earlier comment of saying Monaco is live and kicking, I really do mean it. Monaco has been a project of mine for well over a year now and it's one that I'm really fulfilled to try and complete at some point this year or at least get the majority of things down. And to keep me going, keep me active, I've decided I'm going to try and do an episode once every two weeks and you may think that's not much but Monaco does take a lot of time when building, a lot more than it would do if I was doing something a little bit more creative. And talking of that creative, I'm going to be bringing in the new series as well. So I'm hoping to have a video once a week, if possible, in alternating the two around. So one week it'll be Monaco, the next week it'll be the new series, and so on and so forth. And what I'm also going to do as well is I'm going to push out my Patreon a bit more. For you guys that want to support me, we've already got a couple involved. You can do so, and I'm going to utilise that by releasing videos early and I'm going to be putting episode 19 up right now so if you want to see that guys you can do you can see it's a whole two weeks early but what I probably will do is perhaps have the newest video up a week after the latest one is released publicly so at least you've got a week ahead or maybe a few days I'm not too sure how that will pan out just yet but we will utilize it and not only that it's not just for my benefit it's for yours because it's going to really push me to keep the videos flowing because I don't want to let you guys down. If I've got some patrons paying to see the next episode before, it's going to really push me to excel and uh, yeah, keep the, the product production line, I guess, so to speak, of Monaco going. So do that. And also, I will be doing a lot more streaming. I'm going to be streaming Monaco and also the new series once we get going will also be streamed. So I'm going to try and be a bit more active now socially in terms of um, the series and the community. So any other ideas that you would like to see implemented in the channel or changed or whatever, let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear your feedback. But anyway, there goes the promotional blurb. We'll um, leave that for another few months anyway. Um, so getting back into the bill, you'll see I did a lot of work on the roads here and we're trying to imitate the underground parking here by using some of the uh, underground tunnels. Um, and eventually what I'm thinking is I'm going to, rather than keep them as just blanks as sort of aesthetical things, in the end I think I'm just going to create some crazy road network um, to com connect all of these up because then we're going to see traffic go through them to make things look more realistic. Um, and I think that'd be pretty cool, actually, a good idea to do rather than just have them as, you know, nothing, so to speak. We can then do that and uh, make the whole area come to life. And one thing I really have improved in when it comes to new mods is the network mod pack. Um, I can now use it a lot easier. <laughs> and I think it's just learning from all the mistakes I've made over the uh, the previous times and really understanding the best way to utilize this amazing mod. And one of which is, as you would have seen at the start of this construction, was the fact I pretty much just zigzagged a number of um, lines from the network pack, um, which then allows me to move things around quickly rather than doing one bit here and added onto it after. Um, this way just seemed to work a lot easier for me and it's just a lot quicker I find um, to be able to do that and you can you can really do that very quickly Another very useful release on the workshop have been these fantastic shop faces and very small shop outlets. We've had a lot from Lord Gunny and Raccoon, but obviously Rick 4000 done us the beautiful Monaco ones. 
And what's so good about these is you can place them inside the big apartments and sort of hotel regions. And this is exactly what Monaco looks like. There's a lot of shops, lots of little, little pokey shops underneath the main core of these buildings. And we're just gonna fill in as many as we can here underneath the um, apartments here. And they work so well. The height of them adjusts very nicely to one another and it just looks realistic. It's exactly what you imagine you would see when you're walking down Monaco. And actually looking at the top corner of your screen now, you can see exactly what we was going for here. And I wanted to create the arch look as you can see here. So what we've done is we've used the lovely procedure objects mod and you would have seen what I did is I, re I removed some of the um, segments of it by um, lowering them down obviously you can't actually remove things and procedure objects but if you remove it downwards and away from the area you're working on it's pretty much hidden and gone anyway um, so i wanted to create this sort of under pass passageway here to have the shops underneath it to have like a little walkway through and that comes out pretty nicely eventually i've also been really enjoying these monaco walls um, they just they just make the area look so clean and so much nicer than what you would do without those. Obviously the downside that we have to the um, default bridges and road networks is they don't really have a very nice appeal um, around it. And using the Monaco walls, you can pretty much fill out these gaps and make things look much cleaner and uh, a lot more realistic in my opinion. So as you can see here, we can use the, um, the move it tool just to um, adjust the look of this and height and basically fill in that gap which uh, looks really nice it just looks better and there's gonna be a lot of occasions where that's gonna be happening in Monaco because the terrain is so uneven and uh, uh, it's just gonna help and again that's another thing that I love about the game itself the fact that you have challenges along the way it's not just a simple um, drop and play sort of game. I mean you can play it like that vanilla but when you're detailing and when you're giving yourself these challenges by building on rocky terrain and uh, uneven surfaces you have to use your imagination. Not only do bushes cover those gaps up which is what we've used um, in the earlier days you can place down all sorts of stuff now that just add to the realism and fills in those so-called nasty gaps. It wouldn't be an episode of Monaco if we didn't do some procedural objects work. And here we are, we are taking apart Mr. Miyagi's beautiful car showroom. And what I'm doing here is pretty much just taking off the front face of the shop because I wanted to create a little car showroom in this area here. And there's nothing that would fit in this gap that really does the job. So look, that's how simple it is. We pretty much just hid the rear side of this asset took out the front and just placed it inside this building and it's so simple once you know how and you can do so much with it i mean i'm barely touching the surface on what we can do with procedure objects things are going to get so advanced in the future that um, i'm going to be starting watching other people's tutorials to work out how to do it um, but it is a learning curve and i really do advise you to give it a go at least even if you try it to very basic levels I've started to do some tutorials on perceived objects both beginner level and the more advanced and you'll see top right hand corner of the screen a link to that video so have a watch see what you think see if you can just give it a little go you know you've got nothing to lose it does become easier I promise you it does and with that said, we are nearing to the end of episode 18. It's been another fantastic episode to build. I've really, really enjoyed showing off the new buildings. The Grimaldi um, Centre is sensational. I'm going to try and speak to Crystalisto to get that onto the workshop for you guys who want to um, include that into your building as well. It's a very unique building and I can certainly see that being put in the more higher sort of city centers the, an exhibition center of some sort but that's pretty much it from me guys remember to follow me on social media i'm posting lots of updates and if you're if you're a fan 
if you fancy it, jump into the Discord and have a chat with us. And remember, the Patreon now is in full blow. And if you want to watch the next episode today, you can do so for as little as £1. Thanks for watching, guys. I will catch you in the next one. All the best. <laughs>